Thank you for tuning into our seller interview series. Up today, we've got an Amazon FBA, Amazon FBM, and e-commerce business for sale in the personal care niche. Created in March 2018, this business makes $74,769 per month in net profit, and the listing number for the business is 46056. We do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the businesses they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. We've got the seller with us today to go through the business and cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. Giacomo, thank you for coming on here today. How are you doing? Happy to be here. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And I mean, you know, got to be honest here. This business was created a year ago, March of 2018, and you're already making $75,000 on average over the last year in profit. So the business is doing very well, and I'm excited to hear your take as to why it's doing so well. But before we dive into the questions that I have for you, I want to go ahead and run through a little quick summary of the business. Again, it was built in March of 2018, has a monthly revenue of $147,548, expenses of $72,779 to make for a net profit of $74,769, which is generated on a 12-month average. Included in the sale of this business are the Seller Central account with four SKUs, domain and all site content and files, two trademarks, social media accounts, SOPs, email list, and one pending design patent. Please note the inventory is not normally included in the list price. Further details can be provided to active depositors. Giacomo, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Yes, happy to. I got into e-commerce about 10 years ago, but it's always been kind of a side hustle for me. And my main occupation is actually as a professional musician. I'm a classical guitarist and composer. And so my day job is pretty fulfilling and it time-consuming. I perform at the Metropolitan Opera, among other orchestras. So it always was a side business, but in the last couple years, I focused on it a little bit more. And I've been very pleased with the success so far. And, you know, the success, you've been very successful here, which is, I'm sure, very exciting, especially for something that you always envisioned was going to be a side project here. Can you explain why, when starting this business, you decided to start with Amazon FBA rather than, you know, start by selling on your own Shopify site? Yes. So that simple answer to that is there's minimal time involved. As I mentioned, you know, I'm quite busy with my performing schedule. So the appeal was that I could do something with a few hours of work a day and have a lot of return on investment in terms of time ROI which was super important to me. I have a family and I want to focus on that and running a big e-commerce business on like a Shopify store or anything else just did not seem right for my lifestyle. So Amazon FBA was always the way to go for me. So since Amazon FBA is, you know, you mentioned the way to go, why have you decided to exit this business today? Well, I would love to stay in this niche. And I understand, of course, selling this business, there's always a non-compete, and I'm very clear on that. But the reason I need to sell is because I do have some personal debt that I'd like to take care of. I invested in real estate in my home country of Italy. And although I'm very happy about those decisions, I am not quite happy about paying the interest on it every month. So I would love to make my debt go down. And I would also like to diversify my FBA business and expand to other product lines as well. Something you notice when you look back over the last year at this business is, first off, you had a phenomenal December, but also the sales for the rest of the year are a little up and down. Not terrible, but up and down. So can you explain that fluctuation there? Yes, I would like to get into that. And that was something very surprising. So We started the second week of April in 2018. Uh, I say we, just myself and some investors. And it was incredible success. I launched to a email list. As I said, I've been in e-commerce a little while, so I did have my own email list. So it was a simple launch to an email list, not without any coupons or price rebates or anything. Right out of the gate, it was a huge success. We were getting a lot of organic sales. We were getting reviews. People were loving it, tons of five-star reviews. So I was very happy with this, but it really surpassed my expectations. I bought as much inventory in the beginning as I thought would be reasonable, about three months worth, but I sold out within four weeks. So 
that was a mad scramble. And I had to airship some and I had to, you know, throw capital and borrow and, and double down into it. But that did lead to a June stock out. And thankfully, when we got back in stock, we recovered. And I was also pleased by the sales during the spring and summer. So one would look at the P&L and say, well, this is a seasonal product. And I would mostly agree with that. But I was also super pleased by the fact that there were steady sales throughout the summer. And that was surprising to me, actually. Now, the incredible sales during the winter, I would attribute that to the fact that I think it's a very giftable niche. And what I think expanded the sales so much, and I believe it was about 15 times the sales over Black Friday and Cyber Monday and leading up to Christmas. So where on average we were selling about 15 to 20 a day, we were selling 300, 350 a day. So that was pretty remarkable. And there was no way I could have predicted that. You know, Most people suggest that you stock up about 4X for the holidays. So having 15X in sales was definitely surprising. I could probably attribute that to the careful differentiation I made in the niche. I think anyone who looks into this niche will notice that it is quite crowded right now. But luckily, I got into it before it was crowded. And I think what happens when you get into a niche early is that you get the lion's share of the sales and you also get reviews and all those things add to the conversion rate. But not only that, I feel the differentiation on the brand really helped. There's a unique brand story behind this product, and that led to a very good sense of authority. And also, by authority, I mean authority in the niche. So uh, it's a personal care product that helps people sleep. And I think a unique brand story, it lent itself to a very good brand story there. And the other things we did was we positioned it as a premium product. So most other sellers are selling them on the cheaper side with cheaper materials and the reviews kind of reflect that but we went for super high end the premium on every aspect of the workmanship and the materials themselves so we also charged a premium price now that was a risk because there was no way to know that such a high price would do well but luckily it did <laughs> And people were willing to pay the super high premium price. And that was surprising as well. Now, one thing that's really great about having a high price is that the return is that much better. And although you can sell a little bit less than the cheaper guys, you do make that back in profit. And I think that was a good decision. It's still positioned as one of the most premium products in the niche. And now that it has a very good sizable reviews, amount of reviews, I think that helps a lot. So, and the last thing I'd like to mention is that the Christmas sales and the holiday sales were doing so well because we have a beautiful packaging and display that in the main image. And I think that led to a lot of organic traffic and people love to give these for gifts and because everybody knows somebody who could use a little boost with sleep or if they know somebody who has insomnia or anything like that. So, the market is so huge and so wide, and I think it's a wonderful gift to give somebody. It shows that you care about them, you know, that you're thinking about them in a personal way. And to have a beautiful box on top of that with a wonderful illustration and design, it just creates that perfect gift. So I think that's one of the components that led to the 15x sales over the holidays. And unfortunately, like I said, there was no way we could predict that. There was no way I could tell that, oh, I should, you know, in the fall, I should order 15 times my inventory just in case. Well, you know, nobody does that. So I did sell out quite fast. Unfortunately, I completely sold out in the peak of Christmas frenzy, which was, you know, a week and a half before Christmas, when everybody kind of realized, oh, crap, I don't have a gift. <laughs> and they go to Amazon, they want to, you know, overnight stuff. So that was disappointing. But, you know, you could say it's disappointing, but also pretty awesome at the same time, because, you know, to completely sell out and to prove that the product can do so well over the holidays is just really, really great. Can you explain what it takes from you, the owner, to maintain this business as is? How much time per week do you spend on it? 
Well, that's great. I mean, that's the best thing about this, I think. Well, one of the best things I put in about a couple hours a week over the holidays because there were so many sales that led to an increased amount of customer service. So I did hire a VA for that period of time in January just to help with that. But the sales are, it's not a high volume product. So the best thing about it is that leads to less customer service overall. So, you know, a couple hours a day, max, maybe even just sometimes 15 minutes. And the other side would be just to stay in stock, to check inventory, be really on top of that. And if you have a good system for staying in stock, then you're, a new buyer would be totally fine with this product. But just to answer your question, I would say about on average four hours a week. Can you explain the presence that this business has outside of Amazon? Yeah, there is a Shopify site and it also performed pretty well considering I never did any SEO. And the actual Shopify site itself was put up kind of as a placeholder and I never really got around to optimizing it. It still drove a portion of the sales and that was pretty pleasing to see. And the only way I can understand that is that some affiliates probably picked up on it or it was mentioned in blogs. And there are quite a few blogs written about it. I never pursued any of those intentionally. They're just picked up by, you know, naturally. But yeah, so I, I never optimize the site. I don't even do follow-up emails for abandoned carts or anything like that. It's on my list. <laughs> but it still led to a surprising amount of sales. So I really actually don't know where those, how people are coming to the product because the SEO has never been really worked on. If you were to keep this business, what are the main opportunities for growth that you would focus on? So I'd like to mention that my area of expertise is in organic traffic on Amazon specifically. And that's my experience is how to achieve the best results through highly targeted keywords. So that's pretty much the only way that the product has been getting sales is through organic traffic and organic sales on Amazon. Now, I did spend a little bit on ads as for experimental purposes here and there, but my background is not in ads. I've never really had time to get good at ads, and I would see that as probably a good opportunity for a new buyer if a new buyer is is confident with their approach on ad spend, whether it be on Amazon or Google or Facebook or whatever. There's a huge opportunity there because, well, that's the way it is. It's I think there's something there to that. Other than that, I would consider a new buyer perhaps adding more value to the product itself, to the base product. It's a product that lends itself to accessories. So an obvious way to add value would be to add an accessory or two to the base product itself that would definitely create even more differentiation in the market. I would consider expanding the product line as well. I think the best listings on Amazon have multiple variations, more than the three that are on this listing. Some of the best sellers have up to five or 10 or even 12 variations. So you can expand in that way as well that hits more subcategories and more. So there's size variations and there's many other design variations one could do, and that would totally increase the overall sales. And the interesting thing about this category, which is home and kitchen, is that Amazon combines all the sales from all variations into one BSR. So you could even have a variation that's on the cheaper side that even breaks even and just have that variation driving even more sales. Why would one do this? Well, it would be an interesting approach just to increase to get that BSR better, which would, of course, increase ranking across all keywords, which, of course, would get more eyes on the product, which would increase more traffic and more sales and more conversions. And it creates that flywheel effect. So I think that would be an interesting approach would be to expand the product line in terms of variations itself. Someone might be able to expand other product a new buyer might be interested in expanding to other platforms, whether it be, you know, Walmart or whatever. I think there's opportunity there and as well as expand to other marketplaces. Right now, it's only in Amazon.com. I feel that this niche is getting worldwide exposure. So 
Canada, you name it, UK, Germany, Japan, all those markets are, are wide open. Do you feel like there are any potential risks associated with this business that a new owner should be aware of? I would say, you know, I keep bringing up this topic about stockouts. I would say the new owner should just really make sure they don't run out of stock. And luckily, right now, my current position is there's plenty of stock. So I'm never going to let that happen again. <laughs> but I would just say for the new owner, stay in stock, have a very good system for staying in stock. And overestimate how much you need for the holidays based on last year's performance. That would be my only comment. Other than that, I think the niche, the trends in the niche are all very positive. One could look at this niche and say, well, we don't know if this is a trending product or what's going on with this. My opinion is that all the signs are positive right now, that it's becoming a mature market and that it's becoming a more stable household item. And the reason I say that is because I see a lot of movement into retail, uh, whether it be your Target or Costco. And I think those are all very positive signs that the market is maturing. I also think that more people are becoming aware of this product every day. Anecdotally, you know, if I just ask 50 people I know, do you know about this product? I would say still half of them aren't even aware of it. So more people are becoming aware all the time, which is fantastic. And I think as people become aware of it, they are curious about it. And of course, many people go straight to Amazon to see what's going on. You know, obviously, everybody knows Amazon is expanding their own marketplace by 30% a year. So just in general, I think there's all very good positive signs. Seeing as you have been extremely successful here, if someone were to come to you and say, hey, what's your biggest piece of advice for me getting started with my own Amazon FBA business? What would you tell them? You mean somebody who's starting for the first time? Yeah, someone who's looking to get started. Okay, I love that. You know, it's something I've been sort of obsessed with for a couple of years. So this is my advice. If you're starting a new product on Amazon, it's not enough just to be a Me Too product anymore. The signs have been all indicating that for, I think, a couple of years now, that it's not enough just to throw up a product that is pretty much the same as anyone else's. Maybe in 2018, 2017, you could get away with that if you're lucky, but the risk is very high. So I would do whatever possible to differentiate yourself in the market before sourcing the product. So whether that means innovating on the product slightly, creating a patent, having a very good brand story, all those things are things that differentiate the product in the market and will lead to a much, much lower level of risk. I would say that's my main advice. And it certainly worked for you, as you mentioned, within your own niche here, whereas other people were going for cheaper products, you built this premium line here. So you took your own advice and differentiated. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the way I like to think about Amazon. Everybody thinks that people go to Amazon to get a cheap product or uh, they're going there for the best deal. And I think there's a certain bias in that. And in my experience, there is a whole segment of the population in the U.S. that is always looking for the premium product and seeing what, why, why is it a premium product and why is this so expensive? And there's actually been a lot of studies to show that many people will buy the most expensive product just because it is the most expensive product. Because in a lot of ways, we're all kind of conditioned to think that price equals quality. And I mean, in this case, the price really does equal quality. So that's led to, you know, the great reviews and all that. So you really do have to have a great product. You can't just uh, <laughs> make a cheap product and charge $300. But yeah, that was always the intention from the get-go. And you could say it was a bit of a risk and a bit of an experiment, but a happy experiment because it's really turned out quite well. And I'm pretty happy with it overall. You already mentioned this, but just to reiterate, would you commit to a non-compete? Oh, yes, of course. I understand that's a concern for most buyers and I have no problem committing to a non-compete. There's plenty of opportunity in the world. <laughs> <laughs> How much support are you willing to offer a new owner during the transition period? I'm basically willing to offer unlimited support, you know, to a reasonable degree. I would say I'd be open to calls, to uh, text messages, you know, really anything, you know, because there's always those little questions that pop up and I'm happy to stay in, to help 
support the new buyer as much as I can. Now, if I get really busy, you know, I might need to modify that a little bit, but I'm basically open to unlimited support. Are you open to negotiating on something like an earnout? Actually, I would be, yes. Awesome. Giacomo, thank you very much for the time today. My final question for you, if you were looking at this business from the perspective of a potential buyer, why would you feel like it is an asset worth buying? I would get very excited about this niche. I would be, well, it depends who the buyer is. Now, if I was a buyer that had some secret sauce for advertising, or if I was a buyer who knew how to expand to other markets, if I was a buyer who was interested in the growth opportunities, I would be very excited because the way that this product has been selling has been strictly through organic sales. So, I mean, I wouldn't say strictly. There is some ad spend here and there, but I would say the vast majority has become through organic sales. So if someone really wanted to find a niche and an opportunity that could lead to growth, I would be very excited. Thank you very much for taking the time with me today. I really appreciate picking your brain on this million dollar business. Oh, so happy to do it. Thank you. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. And if you want more information, the link will be below the video that will take you to this marketplace listing. If you're watching this on the listing page and want more information, become a depositor today. When you make the deposit, one of our business advisors will be in contact with you. You will be given everything you need to review this business. Have a great day.